Thai is not an easy language to learn, particularly for native English speakers. I get on okay with my Thai, but for the amount of time that I've been living here in the north of Thailand, my Thai language really is not good enough. When I'm out and about, down at the local shops buying stuff, I can usually have a bit of a chat, a bit of a conversation and understand what's happening. Sometimes I'll get stuck on vocabulary, but generally, yeah, with easy subjects, I know what I'm talking about and I can make myself understood and more so understand what's being said to me. But I think this is typical for anyone learning a second language that your comprehension, your understanding of what's being said is greater than the actual speaking that I can do. I was out recently looking for mangoes to buy down at our local village and I had a couple of conversations with shopkeepers about mangoes and the shortage of mangoes this year. It's been a very, very dry, hot season and it appears that the mangoes haven't grown as well. So there's not as many of them as there often are. And so I've been hunting for sweet mangoes because I want to make some mango chutney. So in situations like this where I know the vocabulary, where I'm familiar with what's happening, I can get along. I might not understand everything that's being said, but I get the gist of it, I get the understanding. This lady was telling me, this is Jeddah, she runs one of the big stores in our local village. She was telling me of a location out on the main road at the O-top stand that they have plenty of mangoes. She was also asking, did I want sweeter mangoes or sour mangoes, things like that, that I could get the, the basic idea of what she was saying and, yeah, understand the communication and make myself understood in these situations. But in any situation where I don't have the right level of vocabulary, I am relying a lot of times, if my wife is with me, definitely with my wife. But at other times I have now an app on my phone. I always used to carry a, a dictionary with me. I think I had two or three of them. Uh, that was a Thai English, English Thai translation. And this really was a good friend. It was a really good tool to have. And now there's some apps out. Some of them are better than others. And now also Google Translate is to a point it's developed that it's actually usable for more than translating single words, which in the past that was pretty much all it was good for. You'd give it a string of words or a sentence and that would quite often return just gobbledygook. It would return absolute nonsense to you. So now that's improved. So these modern tools are really helpful for getting by, but they're not actually great for helping to learn the language unless when I'm using them as vocabulary lists. Having grown up in New Zealand in the 1960s and 70s, there was no real incentive to learn another language. We're a tiny little country that's surrounded by the ocean and really it was a monolingual society when I was growing up. It's changed a lot now as bigger groups of Asian people and other ethnicities have come and settled in New Zealand. But by and large, when I grew up, we spoke English and there was no real incentive to learn another language. My dad was Dutch and he did try and teach us some Dutch at the time when we were young, but it didn't really stick because I couldn't see any point in it. I couldn't see any reason to learn a language that actually didn't even hear my dad speak very much because there weren't many Dutch people around. However, I did regret that when I went to live in the Netherlands as a young man and I couldn't speak the language. It was rather challenging. I did, however, in a short space of time, manage to get to a reasonable level of understanding and being able to communicate okay in the Dutch language, and it was far easier to learn and to use than I've found the Thai languages. Partly because English and Dutch uh, have a lot more similarities than English and Thai do. I think for people who have related languages, so people who live in the surrounding countries, the languages are similar. Particularly in Laos, it's pretty much the same as Thai. And pretty much any language that's tonal, an Asian language that's tonal, those speakers will find it easier to learn and understand Thai than, say, an English-speaking person will do. Because in English, we don't use tones to change the meaning of a word, at least. But in Thai, there's five tones. And that's just the beginning of how complicated it is. With the alphabet, reading and writing, oh, it's difficult. 
Apparently though, when you can do it, when you do learn to read and write Thai, it's totally phonetic, so you can pronounce anything correctly. But there's over 40 different consonants, a whole bunch of different vowels and vowel sounds, and three different classes, and like I said, there's five tones. So that's a lot to learn. And as we grow up, when we're young, we have an advantage. Before the age of eight or nine years old, it's much easier for us to learn to absorb and to retain a new language. After we turn eight or nine during that period of our life, we are naturally, we've learned the language that we learn. We've learned our mother tongue, if you like. So our brain changes and it actually is more difficult to acquire new languages as we get older. I'll use that as an excuse for being poor at Thai language, but it's really not a good excuse because it is still possible. I've got a number of good friends who are non-native Thai speakers. They're Australian or American or Italian, and they speak fluent Thai. And it's fantastic that they've learned to be able to do this. I wish I could. When I first came here, I spent the first three years really pressing in and trying hard and studying, spending most of my mornings with a tutor or with books and other learning devices, but it really was a difficult thing. I know the main thing that I didn't do was really to immerse myself in the Thai language often enough. The places I worked, I worked with Thai people, but I worked in English-speaking environments, so English being spoken all the time didn't really help. I did for a number of years have one assistant who is, he's actually Karin, but speaks the Thai language fluently and speaks Northern Thai language along with Karin. When I met him, he spoke hardly any English. I spoke hardly any Thai. And so our language ability has morphed. It's grown. It's evolved together. And we've learned to communicate in a quite a remarkable way. And even so much so that when the Thai people in the offices we were working at were listening to us talk, they would struggle to understand us because we'd kind of developed our own sort of mixture of languages between Thai and English and Karin. So it's kind of fun. But we did primarily communicate in Thai or in English or in a mixture of both. So it wasn't really being immersed in the Thai language. Since moving down here from Chiang Mai, I've got a lot more opportunity to practice my Thai. In the city of Chiang Mai, there's always someone around that can speak English. So if I went to the bank, if I got stuck in, with language, they would find the English-speaking person to help me out. And situations like that where I needed to be able to communicate, there would always be somebody to speak English. This doesn't really help me to learn Thai. However, it is very convenient when you need to get some business done. Going out to eat at restaurants, it's pretty easy to order food in Thai for me and doing shopping or picking things up at the local market. A number of years ago though, I did have one situation where I was down at the big market in Chiang Mai and looking to buy some eggs. I'd already bought some vegetables and I was looking around. Normally the little shops will have a tray of eggs that you can buy half a dozen or so, but at the bigger market I thought, oh well, there must be a shop that sells eggs. Sure enough, there was. I found a shop selling eggs. They had some quail's eggs and duck's eggs, but mainly chicken's eggs. And the woman in the shop, she was an older lady. She was sitting in front of two trays of eggs, like stacks of, of trays of eggs. I asked her, I said, Ao kai hok fong kap, which means I would like to buy six eggs, please. And she looked at me blank and turned to a younger Thai woman who was a customer in her shop as well. And she asked her in Thai, what does the foreigner want? I didn't understand him. And so I smiled at this younger lady and just repeated myself. And she smiled back at me and nodded and turned to the shopkeeper and said, you should listen to the parang, the foreigner. He actually speaks quite clear Thai. He would like to buy six eggs, please. So I thanked her gratefully and felt quite pleased that I could be understood. A number of years later, I was relating the story to my wife and she sort of asked me again, well, what did you say? And I was curious as to why maybe the older lady hadn't understood me. And my wife said, well, maybe you were speaking a bit too correctly. Often what we learn when we're learning a language, and I found this learning Dutch too, is that we learn the correct way of saying things. But this is typically not how people speak when they're at the market or out in the street. 
Here in Northern Thailand, usually in the marketplaces, they're speaking the Northern Thai dialect, which I don't understand much of it at all. But the few words I do know, when I use them, it usually raises a smile. The people are quite chuffed that a foreigner will know some Northern Thai dialect. But speaking really correctly is, yeah, typically not what we do. Certainly in New Zealand, we don't speak the Queen's English. Um, we speak with a good accent and a lot of colloquialisms. And I've actually learned to drop out most of the colloquial language from my English because when I'm speaking to other English speakers from different countries, quite often times they are not going to understand my Kiwi accent or the Kiwi colloquialism. So I've got to try and keep it pretty dry. So learning to speak Thai and learning to speak really correctly doesn't necessarily mean that we'll communicate clearly. A number of years ago, I lived next door to a foreigner in Chiang Mai who was a linguist. He'd studied languages and he had completed his Thai language study up to the level of Bohok, which is like the sixth grade language, and which time you're considered, if you can pass this exam, it's considered that you can read and write and speak Thai fluently. I was out with this neighbour one day and he stopped to have a chat to an older couple who were walking in the street. And he was chatting away and telling them things, and I'm not sure what he was talking about, but this couple weren't sure what he was talking about either. I was busy watching their faces, and I could see that they were really struggling to understand him. He had a lot of vocabulary in that, but I think he'd learned very quickly, but his language had no flow to it. There was no sort of dancing in the language or nothing, so it sounded very clipped and very much like a computer-generated message might sound. So for me, something I'm always conscious of when I'm learning Thai, the little bit that I do know, the, the, the language that I do have, I try to make sure that it flows and that it's understandable and that it's relatable. Not so much about being absolutely correct, and this is one of the biggest struggles for me, is that I'm too self-conscious sometimes to use it. I've got to get over that. I think this is fairly common for language users. You know, we want to be sure that we're saying the right thing and that we're communicating clearly and communicating well. But I know if I am less self-conscious, if I'm more relaxed, then I'm going to learn a lot more by putting it into practice. As I said, living in the rural area that we do now, it's much easier to find people who are local who don't speak any English at all. And these are the most helpful people because typically Thai people are so lovely if they do speak some English, we will defer to English in the conversation, or they will, because they don't want me to be embarrassed and lose face if I make mistakes. Many years ago, when I was first learning, first studying, I was down at our local market, and there's a little bakery down there, and I went in to ask the lady if I could buy bread flour from her, because I was having difficulty getting it in our local area, and I love baking bread. So, And so I went in to see her, armed with my Thai English dictionary, and explained that I would like to buy some bread flour if it was possible. And she said, yeah, sure, this is no problem. And she also inquired, am I learning Thai? Am I practicing Thai? I said, yes. And she was encouraging and, and very sweet. And so every month or so, I would go back to buy flour from her and learn very quickly that I must have time to spend each time I went to her because she would engage me in conversation. And so this was a great situation for practicing Thai and learning different things. And she was obviously very helpful. However, one day I went in and I asked her something about what was happening outside at the market that looked like they were tearing it down. She gave me quite a big, long explanation and I just didn't understand much of it at all. So I said, oh, caught all at my cow jai. I mean, excuse me, I don't understand. And then in very good English, she explained what was happening at the market, and I was quite surprised. I had had no idea up until that point that she spoke any English at all, because she'd never used it with me. She'd never spoken to me in English at all. Unfortunately, that kind of ruined the relationship, because I got lazy and started to speak with her in English more often. And so I get sort of stuck with my Thai, and I'd revert to English. And it's, yeah, one of those things that is kind of challenging. Now I'm married to a Thai lady, my wife is Thai, her English has improved greatly since we've known each other. My Thai has improved as well, but generally most of the time 
we speak English. We're trying to change that at the moment. We're trying to sort of switch the balance a little bit better so that we speak more Thai together. But it's just, yeah, that's the groove that we've gotten into because her English was better than my Thai when we met. So that's been the language that we've defaulted to using. Currently, I'm pressing into learning more Thai vocabulary because I've been frustrated a few times recently when I just haven't had the right words to be able to communicate what I need to. And the other thing that I'm actively doing is getting out more and putting myself in situations where I have to speak Thai because I've gotten kind of sloppy with that. During the time of COVID, during the pandemic, I couldn't get out much and couldn't be in the neighbourhood practising with my non-English speaking neighbours and so now I'm just really putting in some more effort to be able to get out and communicate and to spend time when I'm out having chats with people that I'm mixing it with when I go to a store or when I go to have lunch at a little restaurant, things like that, that I'll make sure to bring up topics that I'm confident to talk about that I know the vocabulary for and this is something that I'd love to encourage you if you're here in Thailand, if you're learning the Thai language the key thing that you can do that will make the biggest difference is just to get out and practice and to use the language and become familiar with the colloquialisms and the natural normal flow of the language rather than just having, you know, stuck in a book or listening to audio recordings or working with a qualified teacher. Nothing wrong with any of those things, these things, are good. having a good teacher will really, really help you so much or going to classes will help you a lot. But the best thing you can do on top of that is to get out and to use the language and to listen to the language and to interact with people so then you pick up the real natural flow of the Thai language. So be encouraged. It is difficult, there's no denying that, but it can be done. As I said, I've got lots of friends that speak really fluent Thai who are non-native speakers, and I'm really working at it a bit more myself. So I hope you found this video encouraging. If you have, click that like button for us, and if you're new to our channel, please click the subscribe button. And if you'd like to look at other videos to learn more about life in rural Thailand, please check out this playlist here and you'll find a whole lot of different videos about what it's like for a New Zealander to live in rural northern Thailand. It's absolutely fabulous. I love it. Thanks for watching.